Big business, we are told, engages in something called predatory pricing. Ooh, ooh, what does that mean? Well, that means that supposedly big business has the power to, let's say, let's say it's me and uh, Dick Clark's here in the room. We have a guy here named Dick Clark, okay? I, I'll leave all the jokes, American Bandstand jokes out of this. It's not fair. And the young students don't even know what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> fair enough. But suppose I'm competing with Dick Clark. The idea is that if I'm a, a gigantic business, I can charge such low prices that my smaller competitor, Dick Clark, and Dick Clark's like three feet taller than I am, my smaller competitor, Dick Clark, can't possibly match my prices. So I drive him out of business. The idea of predatory pricing is that I price my goods so low, nobody else can price them that low. They all go out of business. Everybody buys from me. But then, when all my competitors are out of business, then I jack the prices back up because where are people going to go? Okay, so it's sort of the principle of why it is if you go to the movies. I don't know why these days you would, but let's say you go to the movies. You notice that the small drink is like eight seventy-five. Like, why is that? Well, pretty much because you, where else are you going to go? You can't smuggle drinks into the theater. And I, you don't have to tell me stories about I smuggled a beer in. <laughs> yes, I know you can do it, but you're not allowed to do it. The point is there's nowhere else for you to go. Well, that's the idea of predatory pricing, that the big business drives all the competitors out, raises the prices, there's nowhere else for you to go, got to buy from him, and then he makes all these great profits. Now, a lot of us sort of think, well, you know, that, that, that is what happens. Big business can do that, drives all its competitors out, and then raises price. The problem is you almost cannot find any examples of this. This is, the, this is one of the problems with the theory. Is there don't seem to be any actual real-life examples. We've seen examples of businesses who lower their prices, but, then we, but we don't really see examples of them then raising their prices back up. If Walmart tried to raise their prices back up, everybody would just go to Target, or they'd go to Kmart, or they'd order from Amazon. It's, it's, it's too difficult to, to do this. And even if you do manage to drive all your competitors out, new ones will pop up. If you start raising your prices again, new ones will pop up. So economists these days no longer believe in this. The general public believes in it because that's what we're told all the time. Big business wickedly drives everybody out of business by charging low prices. But economists really don't think that happens. And there's plenty of evidence to show that. And I want to give you a sort of cutesy little story to show what happens when you try this practice of uh, charging really, really low prices to drive out your competitors, and then you get to raise your prices back up again. One of my favorite stories from American business history, which I do include in, in the book, involves Herbert Dow. The name may ring a bell. He, runs the, he ran the Dow Chemical Company. He's dead now. He would be like 187 today or something. But he founded Dow Chemical around the turn of the century, into the 20th century. And he's a great chemical genius. And he was a really, really hard worker. I mean, really hard worker. He would work 18 hours a day and then sleep at his chemical factory and then start up his day again. Now, sure, it meant he grew like a second head and a third arm from <laughs> hanging around chemicals all day, but it was rewarding enough for him to see his business prosper. Now, what's the deal with this Herbert Dow? He develops uh, a particularly cheap way of producing a chemical none of us use or have heard of called bromine. Now, bromine to, to this day is still used in film developing, in dyes. It's used, it's used to sedate people. There are a variety of, of uses for bromine. But he could sell it really cheaply. So he's selling bromine in the U.S. And, you know, as you can, as you can guess, if you sell bromine in the U.S. For a, after a while, you get a little bored with it. Where else can I sell bromine? So he thinks, how about Europe? I'll sell chemicals in Europe. No problem, right? Except if you try to sell chemicals in Europe, there are a group of, there's a group of German chemical sellers who don't want anybody else selling in Europe. So when Herbert Dow shows up in Europe and says, hey, got cheap bromine for everybody, this cartel of German producers knocks on his door and says, oh, no, you do not. You don't sell anything in Europe. We're the German cartel. We sell the chemicals in Europe. You're not going to sell anything. And he said, well, you know, there's no law against it. I'm going to sell my chemicals here. And so the Germans got really upset. Who does this American upstart think he is? Well, they were selling bromine for 49 cents a pound. Herbert Dow's selling it for 36 cents. So, of course, everybody's buying from him and nobody's buying from this German cartel. They're going crazy. What are we going to do to this guy? So they think, we're, we'll destroy him. We will sell bromine in the U.S. at a price he can't possibly match. And that'll drive him out of business. So they were going to try predatory pricing. So the German cartel starts selling bromine right in Herbert Dow's backyard in the U.S. for 27 cents a pound. 27 cents a pound. So what's, what's Herbert Dow going to do? He can't possibly match that price. Well, he's clever. 
he's one of the cleverest businessmen you've ever seen. Because what he does is he has his purchasing agent go buy up tons and tons of his bromine at 27 cents a pound in the U.S. And then he goes to Europe and sells it again at, at uh, lower than 49. And so the Germans don't know what's going on, but they're saying, man, there's a huge demand in the U.S. for bromine, much bigger than we thought. How can we possibly keep up with this? So he's still going just fine. He's just buying it up at their price. So as time goes on, they lower it to 15 cents. We'll drive this guy out of business. We'll sell it at 15 cents a pound in the U.S. So he just keeps buying it up at their price and selling it in Europe. And the thing is that they're making losses. When they're selling bromine at 15 cents a pound, these Germans, they're making losses. They want to make up those losses selling at 49 cents a pound in Europe, but he won't let them. He keeps buying it up and selling it cheaply in Europe. So finally, they reduce it to 10 and a half cents a pound. I mean, this is going to kill them. And finally, they, finally, 1908, he gets another knock on his door. Not nearly as brusque as that first knock. And so finally, so they finally they uh, they say to him, "Well, how about this? How about we sell bromine in Germany?" You sell in the United States, but the rest of Europe is open to free competition. What do you say to that? And he said, okay. And so by just sticking to his guns, he, uh, Herbert uh, Dow totally defeated and, uh, this uh, predatory pricing attempt and became quite wealthy in the process. Did, did very well and, uh, and, and established, in effect, a free market in, uh, in chemicals for the future. So I think that's kind of an interesting story, but where's Herbert Dow in the curriculum? You know, why is he not mentioned? He's a great man, Herbert Dow. We should be proud of him as, uh, as Americans.